close your eyes and imagine her young voice wavering in the darkness, raising her song with courage. The beautiful words of today's gospel are Mary's song, the Magnificat, a young girl's treatise about the state of the world and her stubborn insistence that it just doesn't have to stay that way. But even with the haunting notes of a beautiful song of expectation ringing in our ears, we cannot forget the pain and desperation into which that young, timid voice defiantly sang. She was a teenager, as Roy Moore's campaign reminded us. <laughs> as if the desperate plight of a scared teenager is a reality sanctioned by God. It is not. In fact, it's hard to think of someone more vulnerable and afraid than Mary must have been. You'll recall, as the story goes, an angel came to a young unmarried woman and told her she would give birth to a baby. The young teenager in question lived in a culture oppressed by Roman rule and held together by strict social and cultural rules in which women were property. A baby out of wedlock rendered a woman damaged goods. Her life was ruined. It was into this context that the writer of Luke has young Mary pregnant and vulnerable responding to her situation with a song, singing these beautiful words. The mighty one has done great things for me and holy is God's name. God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Astonishing, her courage, her young life turned upside down, her body changing dramatically, her future devastated, powerless, hopeless, victim. She looked at the reality of her life and decided, no matter who tells me I am worthless, I will sing. No matter what constraints try to limit me, I will sing. No matter how dark and hopeless the world around me seems, I will sing. And sing she did, these beautiful, subversive claims sung defiantly and in the past tense, as if to say, even in the middle of all of this pain, I already know what God is up to. I defiantly claim joy. God has already redeemed the darkest pain of my life. You feel sorry for me? Don't feel sorry for me. Because God has scattered the proud and brought the powerful down from their thrones and filled the hungry with good things, God has kept God's promise. God has already done it, and God will do it again. Today we're in week three of Advent, the Sunday of joy, and our simple gift for this week is music. That powerful force that marks moments for us, that soothes our troubled spirits, that gives us courage and hope in the most desperate moments. We hear and sing some of the most beautiful music of the entire year during these weeks, in fact, and we sing it to call forth hope and peace and joy and love, things we believe about our lives, things for which we desperately long in a world filled with discordant notes and competing sounds. Desperation, alternating for hope, broken relationships and conflict, drowning out peace, sorrow and grief, swallowing up joy. What song brings you joy? gives you courage. How can you, how can I look at our own lives, at our world, so often scored with minor notes of fear, desperation, uncertainty, devastation, and find the courage to do what Mary did, 
to sing a song of liberation and freedom, of righting old, old wrongs, of bringing life and healing and hope into a situation, into a world where these qualities are not readily apparent. You and I, we, we have to find a way to do this because this is joy. Not sugary, smiley, everything is just great, giddiness, but an assurance that in the middle of pain, we will sing. I will sing. On this earth, struggling for breath and dying one degree at a time, what can you and I possibly do to protest? We will sing. In this country where there have been at least 1,576 mass shootings since almost exactly five years ago when a gunman walked into Sandy Hook Elementary School and killed 20 children, six adults and himself, and you and I, we pretended to be outraged, but we still have done little of substance to address God and violence. What shall we do? We will sing. And what will we do in the face of a corrupt government that hands us a Trump-approved score? Well, of course we will sing. We will sing words our government has banned. Science-based, vulnerable, entitlement, diversity, transgender, fetus, evidence-based <laughs> words. Words that tell a truth that you and I must have the courage to proclaim. We will sing. And when our voices are stifled and the party line tries to drown out the truth that lies to us and tells us that wrong is really right, and the status quo is just fine, and the people who walk in great darkness are just exaggerating, we will sing. This is the radical act of Advent, of joy. We will sing. As some of you know, I lived for a few years in Prague in the early 1990s, right after the Velvet Revolution, when the country became the Czech Republic. Even in the most oppressive times, that area had been one of the most vibrant cultural and musical centers of Europe, where many, many talented musicians, composers, conductors, and artists lived, worked, and created beauty. Near the small village where I lived, just outside the city of Prague, there was a museum on the grounds of what was once a concentration camp called Terezin. The camp was built as a way station for prisoners from Prague and the surrounding areas, sort of to keep them until they could be shipped off to Auschwitz to the gas chambers. Many, many of the Jews were, who were imprisoned at Terezin were world-class musicians and composers. The rest were largely very accomplished amateur musicians. One by one, they arrived, and then they left. Some of them smuggled in instruments and others carrying only enough defiance to face their fears. And all around them, there was desperation and hunger and sorrow and fear and pain and loss of dignity and death. Among the prisoners at Terezin, there was a celebrated young conductor, Raphael Schachter, who found himself in possession of one score, just one, of the intensely complex and beautiful Catholic funeral mass, Verdi's Requiem. So Schachter decided to teach and perform Verdi's Requiem with a variety of smuggled instruments and an ever-changing chorus, and they did. They sang. The community at Terezin tirelessly rehearsed and performed that Requiem in its entirety almost 15 times. Historians marvel at the determination of Schachter, who kept rehearsing and performing even after the Nazi transports decimated his choir and his orchestra over and over again. And people wondered why a group of Jews chose to create and perform Liturgy of the Catholic Church, a symbol of those 
oppressing them. But those who were there, those who remembered, called it the defiant requiem. In the face of desperation, injustice, hopelessness, death, they raised their batons and their bows and their voices and they sang the ancient words. Deliver the souls of all the faithful dead from the pains of hell and from the deep pit. Deliver them from the mouth of the lion, that hell may not swallow them, and that they may not fall into darkness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Catholic University historian Murray Sidlin said, I could see that almost every line of the Mass could have a different meaning if you were a prisoner. Deliver me, O Lord, for them meant liberation. Nothing remaining un unavenged was certainly the hope of punishment for their captors. When Sidlin checked with the survivors, they told him that their conductor Schachter told every chorus, we will sing to the Nazis what we cannot say. This was their way of fighting back, their form of resistance, of defiance, and the same is true for you and me. The work of practicing Advent joy in the face of sorrow and devastation takes doing what Mary did naming the horror and the pain and the brokenness in which we find ourselves. And there is plenty of that. And declaring that God has already fixed it, that there is a reality for which we long that is already in place and we will choose to live into that reality. We will sing. This is true joy, the unwavering insistence that God has already done what we cannot manage to do on our own. And we will celebrate that in the darkness. We will not keep silent. We will sing with Mary, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. And holy is God's name. We will sing. was waiting for a savior and then mary got word that god was with her and she sang she sang the words straight from her heart so how did she sing in the dark how do we sing in the dark where would i even start sometimes words just fall from your mouth faster than you can iron them out like rain in the summer or love when I was younger and there's no stopping them, so just breathe them on out. And sometimes words drop hard and flat, sinking into hearts that want to give them back like a dissonant chord or a Kansas storm, but you can't rewind wind once it has formed. And then other times words must be pulled from our bones, those safe pockets where we hide poems and hope because not all words desire to flow, so sometimes we say what we know we must know. And then other times words are exactly what we need, painting our lungs with gardens and dreams, promises of what we can and must be as we speak word chains of hope and peace. And the story of Jesus begins before a birth, because first there were messages and dreams and words, 
there was a still small voice perfect for a lullaby, an Isaiah who saw Emmanuel's light. There was an angel and a dream and a child kicking in Mary, Mary who speaks and sings. And I can't help but wonder, did the words just fall out? Did she pull them from her bones? Did she iron them out? Or did she sing with reckless abandon? Did she scream? Did she laugh? Did it feel like a holy type of breathing? And the words she says could be narrowed down to a handful of verbs when you flatten them out. So in 20 words or less, what she essentially says is, God's great, why me? I don't deserve what's happening. God's merciful, strong, and just all day long, and our world is broken, but you make it right. So I will sing, I will sing all night. And I think when I silence my brain, which buzzes with a thousand toxic refrains, I can find Mary's song like a book on a shelf in between memories of me and someone else. So like a child learning piano, I stumble over chords, shaky hands, tired eyes until her melody is formed. And it rolls through my mind like a constant refrain until hope grows strong and fear slowly wanes. For when I see mountains and sunflower walls and children stand up after they fall, I know a God that helps us stand tall. And I hear Mary say, my soul magnifies with all. And when the world throws around the words not enough, like a hammer in a china shop beating me up, I hear Mary say, God has looked with favor on me, for I am lowly and I see what she sees. For I am like Mary with bruises and bones, and if God found her, then God must know that despite what the world says, I am enough, and that is a word that is covered in love. And when the world seems to be falling apart, and daylight seems to be getting dark because justice is so overdue that it hurts and we march through the streets but can't feel it work. I hear Mary say, you lift up the lowly and God, you alone fill the hungry. And I know that this hurt is not what God planned. So I join her in prayer and I sing it again until her song of hope becomes my refrain of protest and lament when there's far too much pain. There will be nights that drag on and on, and Advent seasons that feel far too long, because we wait for a hope and a light and a day, for the birth of love and a reason to pray. And while we wait, we will need words to say that can help us keep the fear at bay, words that we can strap to our feet that will help us stand tall when the ground starts to sink. So I don't know about you, but I am relieved for those before that started to sing. Because winter is long and I still wait for dawn. So when I run out of words, I will sing Mary's song. For somehow she found strength in her bones to sing of hope that the world didn't know. So when I need hope, I will follow her lead and I will sing those words as protest and plea. I will sing for her, for you, and for me. So when there's blood in the street, I will sing. When hope's out of reach, I will sing. As a cry for peace, I will sing. When my heart breaks clean, I will sing. When words get stuck, I will sing. When the world needs love, I will sing. For her, you, and me, I will sing. I will sing. I will sing. And meanwhile, I will sing. Mm -hmm.